Hi there folks, welcome back to the channel and for this video I will be continuing my look at Scottish literature and for this video I will be doing a book review and I will be looking at the novel uh, The Expedition of Humphrey Clinker or as it is sometimes referred to as just Humphrey Clinker and it was written by Tobias Smollett and this is one of the books that I picked up in my book haul at Abbey Books in Paisley and I also had a little visit to Renton which is the town where Tobias Small was born so I will try and see if I can link both those videos into a wee card in the top corner of this video so if you're wanting to have a little nosy at those videos click on that link and I'll take you to those videos so this was actually one of the books that I had to do when I was doing my undergrad's uh, degree at the University of Glasgow and so I also said that it was due a reread but before I get onto any discussion about Humphrey Clinker as a novel a wee bit of housekeeping first if you're enjoying my channel, if you're enjoying my videos if you can click on the subscribe button, if you can click on that notification bell leave some likes, leave some comments, it's always really appreciated and if you'd like to support the channel further, I will post a link to the channel's coffee.com page in the description bar below and in the pinned comment in the comment section. So back on to the main topic of this video. So again, Humphrey Clinker by Tobias Smollett. This was actually published in the June of 1771 uh, and it came out three months before Tobias Smollett's death. So this was the last book that he wrote and the last book that he had published. Uh, when he died he was in Italy and I th I'm pretty sure that's where he's buried. It's, I'm sure it's somewhere in the north northwest of Italy he's buried in. And again it's ref referred to, I'm, I do hope I'm pronouncing this properly, it's it classed as being a picaresque novel and an Episcopal novel. So essentially, the, the whole idea of it is it follows uh, about six characters who all write a series of letters which are all dealing with the fact that they're travelling about the British Isles. And so it's picaresque because they're travelling about and Episcopal, Episcopal because they're writing letters. And it is very much in letter form so it's kind of something that you will very much have to, to kind of kind of get used to it as a reader and uh, that it's not really told in a linear fashion it's they're all there's times when some of the letters overlap and are describing the same events but from different points of view and it also has to be remembered that well, has been kind of kept in mind as well that even though the book is named after one of the characters, named after Humphrey Clinker, who is in the novel, he doesn't appear in the novel until about a quarter of the way through. And he he doesn't actually write any of the letters. None of, none of the letters come from Humphrey Clinker. Uh, there's six different perspectives who or different characters who write the letters, which happen to be Matthew Bramble, who is a Welsh squire, there's his sister Tabitha, or Tabby, and there's his niece and nephew, who are Lydia and Jeremy. Uh, Tabitha's maid, who is called Winifred, and there is Wilson, who is Lydia's, or the, who is a niece. That, uh, so Wilfred is her love interest. So those are the six people who we see the uh, from we see the different events within the book. We see it from their perspectives. So we end up it is from their perspectives that we end up seeing and coming to know Humphrey Clinker. And the novel itself is quite a cynical look at, or quite a cynical kind of comedic look at society in the eighteenth century, especially during. I think it is roughly supposed to be uh, it's supposed to be during the reign of George III so for those who are maybe not too sure of 
uh, kind of British kings. George III was the one that was mad or was seen as being mad. So if you remember the movie The Madness of King, king George, that was George III. So it was set during his reign and it was during his periods of madness that George, that George IV was essentially ruling but without actually having been crowned king. So that's the period in which this is all set. So it's kind of roughly around about the time that people like Jane Austen was writing. So it's kind of very much that kind of period in time. And when you can, when you when you first come across the characters when the story first starts, it's set in Bath, which is a spa town in England, and it was during the eighteenth century that spa towns were very very popular. But during the novel, there is there is a bit of a kind of conflict, a bit of a kind of comedy of conflicts uh, and it, you do very much see it through like how all the characters all have different ways of looking at places like Bath and um, because you have Matthew who the, who's the uncle has this very kind of has this very cynical view on a spa town like Bath that as far as he's concerned it allows the different <coughs> different people from different parts of society kind of to mingle and it, 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 it's like that idea that, that the idea of different classes mingling just really makes him feel uncomfortable. He doesn't like the idea that a lord could be sitting talking to a workman and or that somebody who is a wealthy merchant could be Taking the opportunity to maybe kind of like climb a social ladder, and it very much kind of rubs him the wrong way. And there is one point that when he, because with Matthew as a character, he is actually a hypochondriac. It is, it is very, he's very, he's very paranoid about his health. And there is one point where that is get it is highlighted in the book where he goes to one of the the spas and Bath. And somebody is taken by him, who, as far as Matthew's concerned, is covered in sores, and he starts panicking about what or how that's going to affect the water of the spa, that the, 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 the water could have kind of germs in it because of this person who he, he's seen as being covered in sores, and it's very much like you could just see him kind of having this kind of. Bit of a panic attack, just at the idea of seeing this person go getting taken by him, and that again that just adds to the humour of the book, and because again it very much kind of plays on how different generations see the world and see how the world's changing and how they react to it, and uh, there are different perspectives on what's going on. Uh, it's, it's, it's very highlighted by the fact that you do you are getting the same events told from different points of view and you'd have Matthew Bramble panicking and kind of being very cynical about certain things while Lydia and Jeremy are seeing places like Bath and London as being these places of interest and wonder where they can really experience life and very much are kind of seeing these places as being places for, for where young people can become who they're supposed to be. And again, that is a scene with one of the letters that Lydia writes when she is talking about Bath and it very much does contrast with our uncle's cynical view. She's kind of seeing it as being this place of wonder and this place of and there's entertainment, there's all these different things going on that she can go and hear, mu hear music being performed and and she's very much seeing it through fresh eyes which does kind of make kind of, it, it, that, that is part of the reason why the, the you do kind of end up just smiling and 
kind of have a bit of a giggle at the book because you, you can so see the, the kind of the, the humour and the conflict. But there's one reference uh, which was on page 78 of the book of the edition that I'm reading, which is the Penguin English Library. And it makes mention of a Scotch lord and a mulatto heiress being seen at a ball. And I automatically thought, could that have could that be uh, Dido Bell? Because uh, if, if, if any of you have ever seen the, the movie De uh, Bell, which is about the young biracial girl who was the the daughter of a Scottish or of essentially of a lord, or, and she ends up kind of spending time in within British society, that was Dido Bell, and the fact that they are making make mention of that, I automatically thought, uh, well, I did automatically start wondering if that was who it was, but again, it's probably something that probably we'll never, never know. And, and I, I could do love the fact that kind of you do have a sense of places like Bath and London being these social melting pots where you do get these kind of, we do have all these different people from different back, backgrounds and uh, different, maybe possible different cultures as well, all coming together and spending time in each other's company. And the, it, it does kind of, it does give that idea of society even back then being a, uh, interesting and not something that is as stagnant as people may have thought it was. But it's not until, as I've seen earlier on, but quarter of the way through the book when they, the characters are travelling to London, uh, they actually come across Humphrey Clinker. And it was... Where it's, I think it's, it's, they're actually on the journey to London itself that they actually end up meeting him. And he is very much presented as being kind of simple and something of an innocent as well. That he is not educated, he's not cultured, that he's poor. And uh, I think Tap of the Hat has very much this kind of negative reaction towards Humphrey Plinker. Because even though he ends up coming to their aid and helping them out, she, she's seeing this person who doesn't have a shirt on his back, who is what clothes he is wearing are ragged. And she is very much looking down on him and judging him automatically and decides that because of the way he looks and because he's seen as being a bit of a, a, sim, a, kind of being a bit simple and a bit innocent, that she doesn't like him, uh, so she doesn't want anything to do with him, despite the fact that he has helped them. And I think that very much could reflects society's view on people who are viewed as being undesirable. That if you don't look a certain way, if you don't act a certain way, that you're automatically just judged. And but the whole relationship does slowly gradually change and uh, and i do think that the the humphrey clinker is almost like a reflection of the other characters so they all see themselves as being worldly and educated and cultured but i think to a certain extent they're all slightly blind to how naive and innocent they actually are and how maybe they, they don't quite have a clear view of the world around them. And essentially they are blinded to what is actually going on around them by their belief in, in them being highly educated and highly cultured and their sense of like social superiority. And that, that, that is sort of kind of reflected and highlighted by the fact that Humphrey Clinker is seen as being Bit simple, bit innocent, but seems to view or seems to see the world in a far clearer light, or far, uh, or see, sees it in a, a far clearer way. 
and is able to make and seems to understand the world in a better way than Matthew Bramble and his family appear to. And I do think maybe that as I, if I'm if I'm wrong in this uh, interpretation of the title, yeah, yeah get in, just kind of let me know in the comments below. I kind of would be interested in hearing what you all think. But is it the title of the expedition of Humphrey Clinker is an interesting one? It does seem slightly ambiguous, especially as you don't actually hear anything from Humphrey Clinker's point of view. Everything is from the point of view of the six people who are writing the letters. But the title to me does seem to really hint at Humphrey Clinker realising or coming to understand who he actually is. Which also mirrors uh, like Matthew Bramble and his family coming to understand the world around them and under understand themselves in a greater way. So they essentially have an expedition because they have met Humphrey Clinker and they are forced to learn and forced to experience new things. And um, yeah, so uh, it's one of those good books that I think it is a bit of an uh, underrated classic. It's one of those books that is a wee bit overlooked, I think, because again, you have so many books from the 18th century that people love, people enjoy. And I think that the Expedition of Humphrey Clinker should be up there with all the other classics from the 18th century. It might be a bit of like a difficult style for people to get into because again it is all written in letter form but I think once you come to terms with it being in in the form of letters you do end up kind of really enjoying it and really getting into the story and yeah there's the fact that yeah this I had looked at this when I was an undergraduate at the University of Glasgow as part of my undergraduate degree which was archaeology and Scottish literature and this was one of the books that was on the required reading list. I'm not too sure if it's still on the required reading list but if it's not I it should definitely be back, back on it and it's de it is one of those good books that yeah I would always recommend especially if you do love reading 18th century fiction and maybe it's like if you enjoy reading things like Jane Austen this could be a book that you'd be interested in having a look at so as well as it's a book that I enjoy I have enjoyed reading again I uh, enjoyed having a good look at and yeah one that I would recommend to anyone and yeah so hopefully you will all have enjoyed this video hopefully you will all be intrigued by the expedition of Humphrey Clinker and yeah, I'd like to think that you may want to go off and explore more of Scottish literature as well so I do hope that I will see you all in the next video bye bye